Fright Night Movie Franchise Explored Vampires almost disappeared from the mainstream for quite some time, though there had been some adaptations from Stephen King's Salem's Lot producing a miniseries in the early 1980s, there were hardly any vampire films after the Hammer horror films of the 60s and 70s. Fright Night, released in 1985, had just the right timing for a vampire horror movie. By reintroducing vampires to the horror genre just the way Scream reintroduced slashers. This Tom Holland film was highly successful, as it became the second highest grossing horror film of 1985, spawning a sequel in 1988, a reboot in 2011, and yet another inspired version in 2013 with a false identity of a remake of the 1988 sequel. The original Fright Night is a cult classic, with horrors and the practical effects of the 80s that make it impeccable. The debutant director defined the vampire story in a different format altogether, presenting a new outlook. What if someone finds out that their neighbor is a blood-sucking creature? The story revolves around young Charlie Brewster, featured by William Ragsdale, who finds out his neighbor Jerry, played by Chris Sarandon, is a vampire. To stop Jerry from mass killings, Chris sought help from Peter Vincent, featured by Roddy McDowell, a vampire hunter. The film had received positive responses from the critics and grossed $24.9 million at the box office. The Fright Night Part 2, the sequel, was released in 1988 and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. William Ragsdale and Roddy McDowell reprise their roles as Charlie and Peter. In this sequel, Charlie, who goes to a college, is about to encounter more vampires, who are desperate for revenge. The other stars of the movie are Tracy Lind and Julie Carmen. The 2011 remake has the same plot as the original 1988 Fright Night, while Craig Gillespie directs it and stars Anton Yelchin, Colin Farrell, Christopher Mintz, David Tennant, and many more. The film received quite positive reviews for its humor and cast performance. The franchise's final film is Fright Night 2 New Blood, released in 2013 and directed by Eduardo Rodriguez. The film stars Will Payne, Jamie Murray, Sean Power, Sasha Parkinson, and many more. So let us introduce you to the vampires of the movies, one by one. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. If you love being scared, it'll be the night of your life. Fright Night, released in 1985. Charlie Brewster was an average teenager who lived with his widow mother and loved watching the Friday Night Show hosted by Peter Vincent, who claimed to be a vampire hunter. One evening, Charlie saw his new neighbors move in while he began to spy on them. Very soon, he discovered that his new neighbor, Jerry Danbridge, was a vampire responsible for the deaths of several victims. Charlie informed his mother, girlfriend, Amy Peterson, and friend, Evil Ed, about his findings. But no one believed him and doubted his sanity. He even informed the police as the detective accompanied him to Jerry's house, where they met Billy Cole, Jerry's roommate, who showed them around the house. The furious police detective left, considering the allegation against Jerry, Charlie's exaggerated imagination. Imagine how shocked Charlie was when he saw Jerry sitting in his living room, seemingly invited by his mother. Charlie began to fortify his house as he knew that once vampires are invited in the house, they can enter anytime they want. That evening, Jerry entered through the second floor window and threatened Charlie that either he would have to ignore his vampiric activities or be killed. When Jerry tried to choke Charlie, he stabbed Jerry's hand with a pencil. Injured Jerry revealed his true demonic image with red eyes, sharp fangs, and claws. He threatened to kill Charlie the following day. Chris Sarandon later claimed that if he hadn't practiced meditation, he would have gone mad due to long hours of makeup. Almost eight hours were required to complete the makeup for Jerry's final transformation. Also, his finger extensions would make it difficult for him to go to the bathroom. Scared, Charlie eventually sought the help of Peter Vincent as they visited Jerry's house with Amy and Ed. It didn't take long. Vincent was convinced about Jerry being a vampire when he discovered that Jerry had no reflection in the mirror. In the meantime, Jerry hunted down Ed and converted him into a vampire while he tried to attack Vincent. Ed was burned by a crucifix to the forehead by Vincent. Jerry then hypnotized Amy, abducted her, and bit her in the neck. Helpless, Charlie had no other way but to approach Vincent once again, who reluctantly agreed to help him. 
As they enter the vampire house, Charlie and Vincent attack Jerry with a crucifix. But Vincent's crucifix didn't work as imagined, as he didn't have faith in his spiritual power. Billy struck them both, knocking Charlie unconscious while Vincent panicked and ran over at Charlie's house only to be attacked by Ed in a werewolf form. Vincent managed to save himself by killing Ed with a wooden table leg. A more confident Vincent returned to Jerry's house to rescue Charlie and Amy. You sure? So far, everything has been like it was in the movies. Where they confronted Billy again. And this time, Charlie stabbed him with Vincent's wooden stake, turning him into a mess of blood and green slime. Charlie and Vincent then confronted Jerry again as they lured him towards a window using their crucifix. Vincent's crucifix worked with renewed power as he became confident, developing complete faith in spiritual power. As dawn broke, Jerry transformed into a bat, attacked them, and fled into his coffin at the basement. When they found the coffin in the basement, Amy almost turned into a vampire, attacked them. As Charlie fought with Amy, Vincent opened the coffin and tried to stab the stake through his heart, but missed piercing his heart since Jerry woke up. Jerry got out of the coffin and broke the stake in two. When he attacked Vincent, Charlie started smashing all the basement windows to enable sunlight to enter and hit the vampire. Finally, Charlie managed to reflect sunlight onto Jerry and blasted him. As soon as Jerry died, Amy was released from the curse and became human again. The movie concluded with Amy and Charlie watching a horror movie hosted by Peter Vincent. When Charlie looked out of the window towards Jerry's house, he saw a pair of red eyes in the darkness, but he ignored it. Ed's voice could be heard, Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. The greatest strength of the film is found in the terrific performances of all four head actors. Sarandon was magnificent in the role of the vampire. The blend of horror and comedy was smooth in the screenplay, which makes the film a great watch. Friday Night is the first vampire film to spend over $1 million on special effects. The special effects were quite impressive, especially when Billy melts in front of our eyes. The film doesn't feature slashers or non-stop gore, but adds a twist to a familiar storyline, making it an outstanding cinema. <laughs> Do you have a taste for terror? Fright Night 2, released in 1988. Three years had passed since the incidents of the first film. Charlie, after prolonged psychotherapy, believed that Jerry was a serial killer and vampires didn't exist. Charlie and his girlfriend, Alex Young, visited Peter Vincent, who still acted as the vampire hunter on Friday night's horror program. While looking through the window in Peter's apartment, Charlie once again saw a few people bringing four coffins inside the building. Leaving Peter's apartment, Charlie saw four strangers walking past him and getting in the elevator. Charlie was drawn to one of them in particular, named Regine, who was very attractive. While dropping Alex back to her dorm, Charlie and Alex started making out in the car. But suddenly, Charlie was shocked to see Regine's face instead of Alex's, and he pulled back. Alex became upset and hurried back to her dorm where she was silently being stalked by Louis, a member of Regine's group. He climbed up the wall outside her window, but Alex slammed her window, surprising Louis as he crashed back on the ground. Charlie began to dream that Regine had visited him and converted him into a vampire. He revisited his psychiatrist, Dr. Harrison, who convinced him that such dreams were quite common and Charlie needed to focus elsewhere. He decided to go to the symphony with Alex, but suddenly saw his friend Richie with Regine and decided to follow them. As he climbed up the fire escape and looked, he was terrified to see Regine biting Richie and draining his blood. Charlie rushed back to Peter, and together, they arrived at Regine's party with crosses. But Charlie was startled to find Richie safe and sound at the party. Meanwhile, Regine introduced herself to Charlie and Peter as an artist attending some shows in town. Charlie, convinced that Regine and Richie were merely performing, left to attend his date with Alex. But Peter stayed back only to find Regine and her friend Belle didn't cast any reflection in his pocket mirror. Horrified, Peter rushed out of the party only to confront Regine who revealed her identity as a vampire, and the twin sister of Jerry Danbridge. Her sole purpose of visiting the town was to avenge her brother's death by Charlie and Peter. Julie Carmen, as Regine, had a panic attack as she had never done prosthetic makeup before. Imagine her condition when she had to undergo the plaster mask again, as the first mask had developed some problem. Peter ran off to his home while Regine bit Charlie in the neck while he was asleep. Peter warned Charlie and Alex about Regine, but they didn't believe him as he packed his belongings and left his house. Meanwhile, Charlie began displaying symptoms of vampirism, as he seemed to become sensitive to garlic and sunlight. 
When he heard about Richie's death, Charlie realized that Peter's warnings were valid. Meanwhile, Charlie and Alex confronted Louis in the school library and injured him with wild roses, known to be harmful to vampires. But campus officers arrested them. Fright Night 2 is one of the few films that had acknowledged that wild roses would repel vampires like garlic. Peter was also arrested as he tried to kill Regine, who was hosting the show of Fright Night. Dr. Harrison helped Alex get the bail, but when they went to free Charlie, they were told that Regine had already bailed him out. As Alex and Dr. Harrison went to release Peter, they confronted another vampire disguised as a doctor and killed him. Alex took his identity and tried to release Peter. One of the patients in the hospital, Fritzy, helped them escape. Okay, Mr. Vincent. Alex and Peter reach Regine's house for the final confrontation and to save Charlie from her clutches. Charlie, transforming into a vampire, was rescued by them while they managed to kill Richie, Bella, Bosworth, and Louis. Regine tried to escape to her coffin, but Charlie and Peter had already lined her coffin with communion wafers, as Peter killed her with sunlight just the way her brother had died. The following day, Charlie and Alex decided to continue with their lives, but still be prepared for any future confrontation with vampires. As they embraced each other, a bat could be heard flying away. The movie was completed in only 45 days with a budget of $7.5 million. It is commonly seen that sequels do not have the same spark as the original. The same can be said in this case too. As Ragsdale and McDowell reprise their role, the continuity is well maintained while they seem to share great chemistry on screen. The film is relatively darker and gloomier compared to the original, as the vampires have been made crueler, but it is pretty entertaining as a horror movie, especially if it's not placed under scrutiny with its prequel. Being a Fright Night fan, you definitely don't want to miss the second part. You can't run from evil when it lives next door. Fright Night, released in 2011. An unknown, unseen vampire killed an entire family in the suburb of Nevada. The film then moved to Charlie Brewster, intrigued by the new neighbor, who had just moved in next door. Charlie's friend Evil Ed informed him that many students had gone missing from the school, but Charlie totally disregarded his words. After Charlie went back home from school, his mother Jane introduced him to their new neighbor, Jerry. Ed informed Charlie about Jerry being a vampire, but Charlie didn't believe him. Soon, Jerry managed to confront Ed and bite him. When Ed went missing, Charlie became concerned about what he had been saying and decided to visit Ed's house and investigate. As more and more people went missing in the neighborhood, Charlie decided to creep inside Jerry's house and discovered the secret room where he kept his victims. Charlie tried to rescue one of the victims, but failed. She was incinerated as soon as they stepped outside into the sunlight. After finding the truth, Charlie went to Las Vegas to consult the expert magician Peter Vincent, but he didn't believe him. The director and screenplay writer didn't even change the names of the characters. Anyway, Jerry took drastic action. As he was not allowed to enter Charlie's house, he set it on fire. Charlie, Jane, and his girlfriend Amy escaped in a minivan pursued by Jerry and forced them to crash. Jerry then attacked Charlie, but Jane injured Jerry with a stake while she fainted with a head injury from the crash. At least some new ideas had been implemented in this film, or else it feels like repeating the same plot again. It is heard that the car chase sequence was completed in one rotating shot. Other shots were added later. Jane was admitted to the hospital, where Charlie received a call from Peter Vincent asking him to meet him. Peter tried to give some advice to defeat Jerry, but was interrupted by the arrival of Ed and Jerry. Peter, as usual, hid in his room while Amy momentarily stopped Jerry by sprinkling holy water, allowing Charlie to kill Ed. But soon, Jerry resumed his attacks as Charlie and Amy ran into a club. Unfortunately, they got separated inside the club as Amy was hypnotized, bitten, and abducted by Jerry. Charlie asked Peter to help him fight Jerry, but he declined, stating that both of his parents had been killed by a vampire. Later, it was revealed that it was Jerry who had killed Peter's parents. However, he gave a special stake to Charlie, blessed by Saint Michael, that would slaughter Jerry and convert all his victims into their human forms. When Charlie decided to confront Jerry, Peter, in the end, altered his mind and accompanied Charlie in his final combat. They arrived at the basement of Jerry's house but were attacked by his victims, including Amy, who was desperate to convert Charlie into a vampire so that they could be together forever. As she was about to bite him, Charlie stabbed her carefully to miss her heart. 
Charlie then looked for Peter and found that Jerry and his victims had almost ambushed him. Charlie shot holes in the roof to let sunlight enter the room and kill them. The sunlight entering the room also acted as a protective shield against the vampires, who were still alive. Charlie was wearing a flame retardant suit, which Peter set on fire as he started a fierce battle with Jerry. Meanwhile, Peter shot another hole in the roof, allowing more sunlight to enter, which totally burned Jerry. And, as Peter passed the stake, Charlie stabbed Jerry right into his heart. With Jerry's death, his victims were all converted into their human forms. Finally, Jerry's mother recovered completely, and after being released from the hospital, went shopping for their new house. While Charlie and Amy get close in Peter's penthouse, Though Tom Holland stated that he didn't like the remake, but in general, the movie generated positive reviews regarding the cast performance and the humor factor of the film. The movie grossed $41 million against its budget of $30 million. The film had improved effects and editing. David Tennant, Imogen Poots, and Colin Farrell were excellent in their respective roles. But the story could have been more well-paced, witty, and creepy. After all, it's a remake, a pretty good remake to watch. The Suckers Are Back, Fright Night 2, New Blood, released in 2013. Charlie Brewster, Ed Bates, and Amy Peterson arrived in Romania in a student exchange program. Charlie and Amy's relationship had deteriorated, as Amy suspected Charlie cheating on her. That night, Charlie spotted a woman biting the neck of another woman in a house across the road. The woman was Jerry Dandridge, a college professor who was supposed to teach their class Romanian history and culture professor at this university. Over the next week that you're here, I want to give you an over- While the class toured the castles, Charlie noticed Jerry seducing a student who went missing later. That night, Charlie spotted Jerry putting a body inside her car, and she drove away. Charlie took the opportunity to enter her house and found a ritual sacrifice chamber. Soon, Jerry returned with a young woman whose blood was drained. Jerry bathed in the blood to become youthful again. After completing the ritual, she noticed Charlie hiding in a coffin, but somehow, he managed to escape. For shooting this scene, a special breakaway coffin was designed to take the shot of Charlie inside. The concept of bathing in the blood of young women was based on the Hungarian serial killer, Countess Elizabeth Bathory de Exed. Charlie tried to convince the police about the incident, but couldn't, and even Amy didn't believe him. When Charlie narrated his previous experiences to Ed, he identified Gary as Elizabeth Bathory, considered one of the most powerful vampires. <laughs> Ed and Charlie decided to track down Peter Vincent, the host of Fright Night, who was found at a strip club and agreed to help them if they pay his fees. The three of them met Amy and confronted Jerry as soon as they boarded the train. Like all the other films, Peter fled, while Ed sacrificed himself to save Charlie and Amy. Jerry didn't waste any time in converting Ed into a vampire and pursued Charlie and Amy. As the duo tried to flee in a taxi, Jerry charged again, and this time, she succeeded in abducting Amy. This time, I felt incredibly sorry for Ed and Amy. Poor Ed is sacrificed in all the three movies, and Amy ended up getting kidnapped and bitten by the vampire. Jerry's secret is revealed that she must bathe in the blood of a New Moon Virgin to withstand sunlight, but on condition that there should be no witness. Amy fulfilled all the criteria, while Charlie, a witness, must be killed to make the ritual successful. Peter prepared Charlie to fight Jerry by giving him holy water, wooden stakes, and garlic. As soon as Charlie entered the castle, he was attacked by Ed, but Charlie used the holy water to cause him to explode. Jerry forcefully pushed Charlie into a bathing pit as Amy bit him, turning him into a vampire. But before Amy could kill him, Charlie staked himself without hurting his heart. Peter finally arrived and staked Jerry, but he too missed Jerry's heart while she chased him inside the castle. Charlie, in the end, delivered such a loud screech that shattered all the windows of the castle as sunlight entered and engulfed Jerry. Charlie and Amy returned to their human form as the master vampire died and they kissed each other. There is no way this film can be called a sequel of the 2011 remake of Fright Night, as it retells the original story with almost the same characters, in a different location and with a female vampire. The film was completed in 23 days, and while shooting in Romania in winter, the temperature was about negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The director, Eduardo Rodriguez, should be credited for the gothic settings and locations with the novel camera work to make up for the lack of originality in the script. The effects and stunts are quite good, presented with some gore and subtle nudity. Though none of the movies compare with the original, the Fright Night movies will surely provide some entertaining nights. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.